Dispenser wearing number 79. That ball was destructed for a 3-0 lead. All right, Jose Abreu, if he was ever gone, he is now back. And he has created wins for the White Sox all year long, but especially in the month of May. Sox have 31 wins, seven of them to Jose Abreu with an RBI that's tied for third in Major League Baseball in terms of game-winning RBIs. And take a look at his trip through May. Four games from the 9th to the 13th, eight driven in, and then suddenly you thought maybe the next couple weeks would be without Abreu. The massive collision with Hunter Dozier. He ends up trying to talk his way into game number two that day after this ugly scene walking down the tunnel. Then the next day, a home run to break up a no-hitter. And then, the day after that, this is all the same series, that mad dash to home, dodging the tag from Cam Gallagher, and the Sox got the win in that finale on the way to the road, and since May the 21st, three home runs, 12 driven in, he had the ankle injury that happened after that slide, but Jose Abreu has played target practice with the White Sox opponents since the injury. This month of May has been dramatic for him, and it has been absolutely fun to watch. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone, Sox are going for the sweep today, in part because of the stalwart, the guy who's always there for you, number 79. They look for him to drive in the big runs and to usually get rallies going and whatever else he does, including playing a great first base. Jose Abreu has been the guy here. He's a big man in the middle, and he's playing exactly like that. Last 16 games, hitting close to 400 with five home runs, driven in 22. Look at the slugging percentage, 750, and 20 times he's hit a ball at least 100 miles an hour or better. So having him around and healthy is one of the keys to this team. He hustles every minute he's on the field, and if you throw him a hittable pitch these days, it's going out of the ballpark. And what's funny is he decides what a hittable pitch is. StatCast presented by Google Cloud, StatCast 3D. You see the types of pitches he's done it on. There is nothing that truly gets him out right now, pitch-wise. No, and I don't think there's any one spot you can throw him. As you see, the baseballs are all over the strike zone. A couple might have been out of the strike zone, but Jose doesn't care. So you can throw your four-seamer slider, change up a sinker, or perhaps a curveball. He hasn't seen many of those. That means he's only got one hit. But when you look at the other numbers, they are wonderfully impressive. 14-13 OPS last 16 games, and he will try to back the Sox opening day starter. Lucas Giolito back to the hill. We'll watch him throw against Baltimore, and Steve will tell you about what you're looking for from Lucas. Coming up after this. White Sox. All right, so we love when Lucas Giolito gets excited on a strikeout, but the emotion he's created in other batters just strikes you watching that video cut. He is going to face the Orioles for the first time since Giolito 2.0. September 16th, 2018, his last start against Baltimore. So you figure they might not have a great understanding of the changeup, Steve, but the slider has been really good in these last two very strong starts. I think that's really the case with Lucas Giolito. If he can spot his slider, throw it for strikes when he wants to, use it on the edges when he has to, then he's going to have a big day. And last couple of starts, he's won them both, the ERA of 129. You look at strikeouts and walks, 16 of them to go with three walks, which is very good. Opponents batting average under 200 and the whip 0.79. So Lucas is starting to feel it. He's starting to put it all together. And what a beautiful day to go for the sweep here in Chicago and send the O's home on the heels of their prolific losing streak. 12 in a row at this point. Now time for StatCast presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Last two starts, Lucas has changed up three hits 11 strikeouts, 11 other outs. I'm surprised there's been three hits. That changeup <laughs> has been that good at times, but when you're throwing the ball there and you're using that changeup, your fastball looks a whole lot better and the slider looks unhittable. See what he's got in terms of that three-pitch mix today against Baltimore. 
is a sweep in the cards. Well, the Sox were two and one against the cards. The sweep would be against the Orioles. Four in a row? We'll find out. Come along with us. Mercedes unloads. A close line for a lead. Johan sends it way out of here. Oh, cannon fired. Billy, 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 Billy. Ah, the chant of Billy yesterday at Guaranteed Raid Field. Evidently, we. We have an RBI dispenser that our crew has made <laughs> out of Jose Abreu. Our Plays of the Week brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Audi dealers. Well, you say something and then suddenly our art department take care of it. And it comes to life before our very eyes. Uh, how about that? So, White Sox and Orioles, game number four. Sox are going for the four-game sweep against Baltimore, wearing the black jerseys today after the orange Yesterday in game two, first inning brought to you by Toyota. And Lucas Giolito embarks on his journey with you. And there is strike number one. Cedric Mullins can hit a fastball. He's hitting 448 on any fastball above 95. That's pretty impressive. And he is the one guy that will consistently steal a base, so. Best for Lucas to keep him off base. So there's the changeup. Last time Lucas Giolito faced the Orioles, he threw 52 four seam fastballs, 16 sliders, 11 sinkers, and nine changeups. Yeah, Different guy now. That's probably going to change a bit. Oh, is it gonna? There's strike three. One down very quickly. For any of these hitters who haven't seen Lucas, you can look on video as long as you want to. You just can't get the feel of this straight change. And what you can't get is the delivery that Giolito has because it looks just like his fastball. And then you swing and the ball doesn't get there. He can throw it in, out. He can throw it up and down. And that's become one of the mainstays of his repertoire. Most strikeouts on changes this year. It's not even close. No, nope. that's pretty good. We saw Means change up yesterday. Lucas has two of them, and they'll both strike you out. There's one for a strike. I mean, Devin Williams has named his. He calls it the Airbender. <laughs> Rookie of the year last year in the National League is here is Freddie Galvis, who's got three homers in the series. That's a fastball for strike two. This could be a long day for Baltimore. Well, look, the fastball looks that much better after you've seen a changeup. Because although you have to sit on the fastball, that changeup is so devastating, you seemingly have to protect against that. Strike three. Uh-oh, Lucas is rocking and rolling early. Two strikeouts in a row. Stu Sherwater behind the plate is calling the edges. And if he's calling the edges, and that was on the edge, you have to go out and get it. Two up, two strikeouts. The only full time Canadian umpire in Major League Baseball, Stu Sherwater out of Regina, Saskatchewan. Our umpire fact of the day, still awaiting a sponsor. First pitch to Trey Mancini, who is back from the elbow injury from Thursday. But we ought to get Jeff the Giant to become an umpire. He would rival Jordan Baker, although not quite as tall. I think he'd make a very good umpire. Jeff's always in the slot. He lives in the <laughs> slot. 2 and 0 on Trey Mancini. And, and look, the Orioles have lost 12 in a row. When Trey Mancini's not in the lineup, it really thins out their offense. He does so much for this team that his presence back in the lineup for the Orioles is a good thing. So it used to be 2 and 0 you'd see your fastball 3 and 1 you'd see your fastball and now 2 and 0 3 1 well if Lucas is on the mound you see a change 
you can't wait for it and it's in a great spot. That's low on a fastball three balls and a strike for Mancini. He's been red hot in May. He has 42 runs driven in overall and in May he's got 25 of them. That's fourth in all of baseball. He was going to challenge the Orioles May record for RBI until he got hurt the other day. Starting lineup brought to you by Insure on the Spot. Get your free auto insurance quote and save in just two minutes at InsureOnTheSpot.com. Weighted, run, weighted runs created plus in May. Anthony Santander has been very dangerous. Nevin at one for two yesterday is a huge weighted runs <laughs> created plus in his career. 329. Mancini a pop up on the right side. It's Abreu to make the catch. He says thank you Nick and then he messes with him and sprints past him on the way to the dugout. Lucas Giolito's changeup is dancing early. One two three inning. We love to see it. No score bottom one time now for the insure on the spot starting lineups. Get your free auto insurance quote and save in just two minutes at insureonthespot.com. Weighted runs created plus in May average is 100. Jose Abreu is double the league average at 201. He has just crushed the ball. Andrew Vaughn's had a nice May. Moncada as well. The Sox starting pitching has carried it. And a couple bench guys uh, in the starting lineup today, including Zach Collins' first start in the series. There's Keegan Aiken, who's going to the mound. This is his first start of the year. He's worked out of the bullpen. Control has been good. Stuff, however, is not overwhelming. He's going to top out maybe 92 on the fastball. That's what he uses, the four-seamer. 58 and a half percent of the time the change up almost 30 percent of the time. You know, Sox saw John Means yesterday and got to him for enough to win and he really is the ace of this rotation and you figure left handed starter with a little experience against a right handed dominant lineup it could be a good day for the offense today. Well you would think it would be difficult to go deep into the ball game if this is your first start so perhaps Brandon Hyde is looking for four innings if he can get it. Probably depends on the pitch count and the Sox can they can run up high pitch counts against guys that want to just mess around with the corners. This is 13th career game for Keegan Aiken eight games six starts last year in his rookie season out of Western Michigan in Kalamazoo. Were they in the Mac when you were at Kent State. Yes they were. Hmm. Two two. Tim hits it towards second base. Wilkerson makes the catch. Let's take a look at the defense brought to you by UI Health. And this is how Brandon Hyde's going to put him out there this afternoon. It's going to be Stewart, Mullins, and Santander in the outfield with Franco, Galvis, Wilkerson, and Nevin in the infield. Once again, Pedro Severino is behind the plate to catch the slants of Keegan Aiken. Not that many slants. He's a fastball, straight change guy. First pitch a strike to Nick Madrigal who wisely in the top of the first inning gave way to Jose Abreu on the pop up to end the inning. It's usually a good plan. Madrigal tattoos this ball to left field. This is going to fly to the warning track and the wall and it's Mullins to run it down for out number two. Cedric Mullins can really go get him. He has great speed can run him down alley to alley and he has a long run for this one. Nick puts a charge into it. It's like he's rediscovered his home run swing. This one does stay in the ballpark just barely. And a nice job of measuring his strides and the wall. by Cedric Mullins. Who becomes very well acquainted with the R and win trust. Two down for Yohan Moncada. Who's been an on base machine in his current streak. So far, this series, three hits, three walks, four runs scored from the three spot. And that swap of Moncada and Abreu has really worked out for Tony La Russa and this offense. It's worked out for both of those guys because Abreu was just not hitting early. He was in the three spot. Moncada was not hitting at that point. And since the flip flop, they both are stinging the baseball and driving in runs. A little bit low. Good call by Sherwater. One and two.
Yohan Moncada celebrated a birthday this homestand. He turned 26. There he takes strike three. So, six up, six down so far on a Sunday matinee. First inning, first two batters. Cedric Mullins strikes out swinging on the changeup, then Freddie Galvis takes a changeup for strike three. And you look at guys who use the changeup, like Lucas Giolito. It's our player profile presented by Geico, make it easy. Lucas uses the changeup more than anybody in baseball this year. At least in a starting capacity. Cesar Valdez yeah. in the Orioles bullpen throws 85% changeup. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it ceases to be a changeup. It, it moves forward as perhaps his staple. Santander has been a really good hitter since coming back off the I.L. Second inning brought to you by Menards. Yeah, Santander has been a dangerous guy in this order. He's been hitting three and now he's behind Mancini, but four for ten in the series for Santander. Since the start of last year, he's hit four home runs on pitches out of the strike zone, so he doesn't mind going out there to get them. Can you exploit that is the question and the answer there is yes. It sure can. You make it look tantalizing, but upstairs a little too quick for him. And that high fastball is the perfect complement to the low change, which is one he tries to die away over the right-handed batter's box. Change up, strike three. Third strikeout for Giolito. Four up, four down. Got the job done after setting him up with a high fastball. Then you come with this, and he's well out in front of it. Probably wanted to have a little more outside, but it was very effective as it was velocity that fooled him, not necessarily location. You know, it's interesting. We didn't talk a whole lot about this in this context because there were not teams like Baltimore appearing on the schedule last year, but Lucas Giolito as a guy who made that transformation in 2019 and skipped some teams there will be groups of guys who haven't seen him in a couple of years and the first time through especially in these types of games could be really treacherous for them. Well, he's also remade and if you did face him before it doesn't really matter. Popped up third base side Yoan in the sunlight makes the catch. Your 2021 Chicago White Sox are presented by Guaranteed Rate. Learn how you can turn your belief in a new home into action at Rate.com. If you believe, you will. Time's running out to secure a ticket package for this season. Visit WhiteSox.com for more information today. Yesterday's crowd, especially for game one, 20,029, was a huge, lively group. I was just saying, they were also loud, very enthusiastic. Wilkerson is the kind of hitter that might put the bat on the ball against Lucas because he's not going to overswing. Later. 90, well look 90, 93 with life is better than 95 without it. Lucas will eventually get to 95 again but right now he is pitching with 93 miles an hour and then setting up the change. Yeah we've seen him have more in there this year. His average fastball is 93 and a half coming into today. Yeah I mean there's nothing wrong certainly and he realizes that he intends to go deep into the ball game. Double header coming up again tomorrow. And we will keep an eye on the Cleveland score all day today because the Indians are playing two with Toronto and so it'll be interesting to see what Cleveland's got left in the bullpen for tomorrow's two with the Sox starting at 210 Central Time. It'll be very interesting if Toronto's offense continues to hammer the ball. Toronto's up 3 nothing in game one right now. And there's strike three. Be gone, Stevie Wilkerson. Four strikeouts for Lucas. Two in each inning. Six up, six down. Well, it kind of looked like this against the Pirates early last year. No score, bottom of the second inning here at Guaranteed Rate Field. We're looking for a base runner. That would be nice. Somebody's got to be a base runner at some point or else they're going to give base runners out in the 10th inning. So we can guarantee you a base runner nowadays in Major League Baseball as there is a first pitch strike from Keegan Aiken to Jose Abreu.
One ball, one strike. Uh, Keegan Aiken grew up in Michigan, in lovely Midland, Michigan, home of the uh, Great Lakes Loons in A ball. Stayed at home, went to uh, Western and Kalamazoo, like Tony Scheffler and Greg Jennings. And it's now one and two for Jose from Aiken. Right now, most of our guys are seeing Aiken for the first time. And they know he's not overwhelming with a fastball, but he's spotting it pretty good early. Abreu lights this one up into left center field. Stewart is over to make the play for round number one. Jose just missed that deal. Uh, the crew wants to show you what happened between yeah, innings. Yeah, between innings. This is our first race of the year. Yep. There's Jason. Yep. Well, a few times when the replica is probably better looking than the reality. Thank you for that. Hey, this is a, a wonderful effort. I mean, you defeated two really fast guys. Honestly, this is the first race I have ever won. And you won it by plenty. I did. I, I mean, did. you dominated today. Who needs realism, right? <laughs> I did stop for ice cream, though, oh, that, and that, was very excited yes, about it. That, I don't. That is typical. I know that. <laughs> is that right? Oh, yeah. Did you bribe them to make me stop for ice cream? No, I think that's part of your mystique, that you will eat anything as long as it's delivered to you. Wow, that sounds a lot like mystique. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and one strike. <laughs> yeah, but you're one for one. You're the kid who batted a thousand. I, that's my first retro race. I know. It's very exciting. So I'm not going to be like Teddy Roosevelt in D.C. It took Teddy like four years to win one in the president's race at Nats Park. I think one year when they had the people down on the field and they had the gigantic heads like they have yep. there. I think Ed Farmer went a full year without winning one. Did he really? Yeah, he was very dismayed about it. What? Yeah, because he thought every time they raced, every time he had to win this time. Didn't work out that way. Well, Ed was an unbelievably competitive guy. We, we lost Ed before the season uh, last year. I could I could see that. Yeah. He 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 was a winner in life in every way and resilient and uh, did not want to lose. And I'm happy I beat you and DJ. I'm thrilled. Yeah, I mean you. It was a terrible beating. Yours is wearing like a sweater vest or something. I feel like your your retro racer has like a vest on. I, I didn't notice that sartorially. I was looking for the right answer to get ahead of you and couldn't get it. I thought you looked a little bit like a blackjack dealer. <laughs> Probably there was some of that in there, certainly. Three and two. And Mercedes somehow touches that ball foul. He's been doing that all year when you go inside on him, and that's what we look like. Don't you look a little like a blackjack dealer? You got the little vest sort of thing going on. Yeah, I think the heavy garment slowed me down. Mercedes to short. Oh, that's a whale of a pick by Freddie Galvis. And he forces one by Nevin on the back end for route number two. Nice play by Galvis. Your mean hit the, this ball really hard, and it comes with a lot of top spin. And Freddie Galvis held his ground and knew he had some time to get it across. So Nevin fields it the other end. This could have easily been in left field. And a good defensive play. Certainly, Aiken appreciates that. Andrew Vaughn takes ball one. Sox come into today three games up on Cleveland in the Central six and a half on Kansas City and then ten clear of Minnesota ten and a half of Detroit in the uh, in the Twins game yesterday Josh Donaldson scored the two millionth run in Major League history feel like you know when you're the ten thousandth shopper or something you get a free shopping spree he should get like a gift card to the MLB team store or something. Well, the guy before him, I think it was the two, two millionth run, something along those lines. Two millionth, yep. Yeah. Uh, the guy before him for the one million run, I believe, I believe was Bob Watson. Yep, that's right. And I talked to Bob many times, nice man. 
He didn't get anything for that, I don't think. First base runner today is an Andrew Vaughn two out walk in the second. ComEd offers bill credits and extended payment plans to help pay past due energy bills. Call 800 Edison 1 to see if you're eligible. Huge series coming up starting tomorrow as the Sox will be in Cleveland for four games in three days. Last day of May into the first couple days of June. Garcia did not go according to Ted Barrett. Let's see. What do you think? That's a look at Ted Barrett. Nope, he checked it out. Cleveland did score in the fifth inning, so it's three to one Blue Jays going into the sixth in a seven inning game. We will not be facing Bieber in a seven inning game, which is usually a good thing. It's tough enough to beat him in nine. Tuesday, it's Dylan Cease against Shane Bieber head to head. And that should be a dandy. Then uh, Eli's coming on Wednesday. Eli Morgan will make his major league debut. For Cleveland and still they're determining who's going to throw tomorrow because they got to figure out who can throw today first in their two games. Savali has gone five and a third in that first game so they're going to try and save the bullpen as much as they can for game one. Savali's riding a 7 1 record. So Leary looking for something in the strike zone. Everybody in the outfield playing him straight away and pretty much same thing in the infield. Two walks in a row. And now it'll be the only lefty in the lineup today for the Sox, Zach Collins. Look, Aiken, I mean, 59% fastball, 30% changeup. He only throws a couple of sliders here and there. Lefty, lefty, it'll be interesting to see what Zach gets. Fastball starts him off. He's going to see a few hittable fastballs in this at bat. He would just as soon they not be up quite as high as the last one. There you see Keegan Aiken, his second round pick 2016, Nick Solak, neighborhood kid. Pete Alonso, Polar Bear, Bo Bichette, and Akil Badu has had a very nice debut season. Just off the plate with a fastball, one and two. Pitch number 37 on the way, and that really comes in to a factor with Aiken. Struck him out on a fastball. We'll go to the third inning. No score. Big story presented by Mattress Firm. And once again, it's a starting pitching on this roster. We told you historically how good they've been this season. Last seven games in ERA right around two. I mean, the Sox have had every chance to win every game that they've pitched like this the last seven days. Well, it's really great to see them step up because you know the offense has been inconsistent. Good one day, not so good for a couple days. But the pitching, especially as the starters, have remained constant. They keep them in the game. And if they can go six, it's only nine outs to cover out of that bullpen. 23 pitches in two innings for Lucas so far as he throws a first pitch called a strike to Nevin as the third inning is brought to you by Hyundai. Surewater has very much of a pitching friendly strike zone. 
And Lucas has good enough control to take advantage of that. Nice catch there by Zach. 0 and 2. And so there, there are two pitches that could have gone the other way but didn't. I think they both had maybe just a piece of the plate. But too close to take and now he's ahead 0 and 2. A little bit outside on the slider. A couple of sliders so far in the sequence and now one and two. For Nevin. It's a changeup. He waited for it and skied it to right. Leori Garcia makes the catch. Wind almost knocked him over. He almost knocked himself over. But he stayed upright. <laughs> Feet on the ground. Nike City Connects coming to the south side. A new uniform series that reflects the mentality and style of the White Sox. The entire line's on sale now at the ballpark. Get yours today. And be ready for the on field debut Saturday, June the 5th. For tickets and information, go to whitesocks.com. We had some questions about what the uniform would look like after we saw what the Red Sox had in terms of their different color scheme and it seemed a little bit odd with Boston not wearing red. And then we saw these and it's like, okay, yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. That's yeah, pretty good. Nice looking unis. Oh, that was a strike. Yeah, that, that was a smart call at third by Moscoso. Well, Stewart's had a hard time with high fastballs. And so you show him the high changeup. You go back to a high fastball. He's one for 20 if it's 95 or greater. Oh, that one was 94, and it's drilled to right. Garcia is back at the wall. It is up and over, just barely across the line for a Stewart home run. He's got some power. That is his fifth. And Lucas wanted to throw that one up a little bit higher. Didn't go far at 373. It was just far enough into the bullpen. Watch it again. Ford home run replay. And he gets it. And he hits it out. Orioles keep taking the lead. And keep finding some way to lose it. So that's kind of a good sign. Here is Severino. Lucas New in the minor leagues in the Nationals organization. So the solo home run has uh, been a weapon for the Orioles in this series so far. It's gotten them their first run of the game three times now. Well they keep scoring the first run and then they have some problems after that. So maybe this is a good omen. Foul just below your uh, location over there. One and two for Severino. By the way, Jordan Luplo is out now for Cleveland. He is out of the lineup. He's been for a couple days now. Well, that really helps when you throw a left-hander against him because Luplo is that kind of a right-handed specialist. But the Indians have absorbed some big injuries. Reyes is gone for maybe a couple of months. Now Luplo, who usually hits well against our Sox, so we won't see him in that series. Plesac, Perez. 2 2 change gets away from the bat of Severino. Two down. Take another look. That's the higher variety of change, equally as effective. Two down, top of the order is Cedric Mullins. Lost the slider that time, ball and no strikes. Yohan Moncada is way in on the grass. 
Trying to take the butt away if Mullins is thinking about it. Two and one. Changeup's been more effective than the sliders so far today for Lucas. That's always a pitch. He seems to always have the change, but the slider is a pitch that sometimes he doesn't have the feel until he moves a little deeper in the game. Fastball, two and two. It's going to be a long run for Billy Hamilton into right center, and he's not going to get there. Garcia has to back him up, and Mullins is scooting for third. He's going to get there. It is a two-out triple for Mullins. It's another changeup. This one up in his eyes, and somehow he pulled it. But you see where Billy Hamilton is. He was shading around toward left center. This plugged the gap in right center, and then he's off to the races. This is some big speed. He's their premier base stealer, and he knows it's three bases all the way from there. Confounding changeup for Galvis, who struck out on three pitches the first time. Well, cut at third base stays where he is at the cut of the grass. Madrigal takes it in the chest, regathers, and throws out Galvis to retire the side. A triple and a home run, and a one nothing deficit right now for the Sox. Billy Hamilton was that yesterday. The home run trot, 16.2 seconds, 364 feet. I mean, he did. He had no idea that ball was leaving. No, when you've only hit 23 of them, you have a hard time having a backlog of home run trots at your disposal. So he figured he would run and see if it went out. It did. And there it went. And now here he is again. Billy Hamilton leads off the third and fouls it away first base side. The chants were loud and at points nonstop of Billy, Billy out there in center, and he had a big smile on his face as he heard that out in left center field. Well, if you're not an everyday star player, you never know when you're going to hear it again. And so each and every time it happens, it's, it's a special time. And, you know, look. Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams brought him to the team as an insurance policy because he could pinch run late and play defense. Hamilton drills this ball. Did he do it again? The answer is yes. Oh, Billy the hitter. Back to back games. Billy, don't you lose that number. 1 1 in the third. Well, the end part of that statement was going to be he was brought here because he could pin run and play defense. The bat is a plus. Another home run. It's tied at one, and you can tell his teammates are enjoying this almost as much as Billy is. That was a line drive rocket. A no doubt home run. Just crushed. And they're going to start chanting Billy again when he goes out there to center, I do believe. I think it's a, it in a year of really good stories for the White Sox. Billy Hamilton is one of those wonderful stories. To third from Tim and Franco throws him out. I mean this guy has gotten knocked around by MLB pitching for years. Court home run replay. He got a fastball. It was just where you would like it. 
It's thigh high, it's inner half, and it produced a tie ball game. He is just one of the most likable guys you will ever run into. He has worked so hard to stay in the majors when people have said for years and years, he is just not a major league hitter. He's not going to be a major league hitter. And everything pushing back against him and to see that joy come out and, and the backing he has from his teammates and specifically Tim Anderson, man. That is great stuff. He's quick to point out that they talk every day and Tim gives him encouragement and tells him there's no reason you can't hit. No, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. There's a lot of people will do that. And so obviously he's taking that to heart. Nick Madrigal goes upstairs for a ball that he sends sailing into left and Stewart makes a catch. Tomorrow the Sox and the Indians open up a series with a doubleheader right here on NBC Sports Chicago. Coverage will begin at 1.30 with Mark Harmon and Ozzie on White Sox pregame live. Apparently Mark Harmon is taking, he's going to be Chuck. You want to know where's Chuck? He's Mark Harmon. What did Chuck find? Vacation. <laughs> Looks like that's the case. Two down for Moncada. Last time Billy Hamilton homered in back to back games. It was the third and fourth homers of his major league career in 2014 off of Will Smith and Marco Estrada just north of here in Milwaukee for the Cincinnati Reds. It's absolutely amazing. The fact that he could be a factor with his bat fairly consistently. And not only the home runs, but he won a ball game earlier with a single up the middle. And we know he's a major factor defensively and stolen base wise. There's Tim hanging out with Billy Hamilton. Well, that was the insurance policy that the front office was able to cash in early. Because when everybody went down, you don't have Billy Hamilton. Now you got a problem. But with him, you can just give me any outfield position, but especially center field, and he's going to catch just about everything. Three and two to Moncada. Another good at bat from Yohan. He has forced pitchers into throwing a lot to him in the last two and a half weeks. Well, also, the more the pitches pile up, the shorter the outing of Aiken because this is his first start of the year. He's been working out of the bullpen and he's probably not stretched out. Opposite way to first base. Who's going to win it to first? It is Montana as Nevin sends it sailing to the first base dugout. Yohan is safe. And Aiken was a spectator for a little while. Yeah, it's going to be a base hit because it would have been a tough play. But if Aiken sprints to the bag, which he didn't, it's going to be an easier play for Nevin. You see him get turned around on the mound, and they just couldn't get over there in time. Even if the throw is on the money, Yuan's going to beat it. Nevin had a lot of time in the pocket. But he, nobody was open. He did. Well, he was waiting on a crossing pattern, and that, he, he expected Aiken to be there when he let it go. Abreu second time against Aiken. First pitch, ball one, a changeup. I don't know if you want to mess around with too many changeups to Jose the way he's been swinging. No, that Jose and Yermin both hit changeups very well. Jose consistently hits him out of the ballpark or hits him awfully hard. Close 2 and 0. Oh. 
Jose to left. Two on, two out. You know, we talked yesterday about Jose as a smart hitter. So look, he knows he sees two change-ups the first two pitches. He pretty much knows the next one's going to be a fastball at 2-0. and oh. So he doesn't get all of it, but he brings his hands in. It's an inside fastball. Aiken thought he could jam him. It turned out he couldn't. And the inning stays alive. So Holt comes out of the dugout to talk to Aiken. And now you're mean Mercedes, and you just said it, but you can't really fool around with left handed changeups to your mean Mercedes here. So, you know, he throws 30% changeup, Aiken does. He doesn't have a whole lot other than command for Mercedes. Yeah, I mean, he's got two pitches, and that's why the first time through, with the exception of Billy Hamilton, of course, first time through, he took the measure of just about everybody. Walked a couple, but they didn't hit the ball very hard. But once having seen it and realizes that he does only primarily throw two pitches, second time through, and he, he won't see a third time through, but the second time through usually turns out better. And we'll see if Sox can catch this in. Your mean would love to. After a six pitch at bat the first time, he takes ball number one on a fastball. Sixty pitches, two and two thirds. Once again, the Sox are racking up pitches against a starter. Ooh, Mercedes eyes lit up on a high fastball at 92. Well, he fouled it straight back, which normally tells a pitcher and a catcher that he's right on it. But he was just under it. He loves to throw the change. Let's see if he goes to one here. I'm moving inside. When Came he moved, in with a fastball. Yeah, when he moved inside, you pretty much knew it was going to be a fastball because you might throw a change up inside. You very rarely from a left hand pitcher throw one by design inside. It's the highest on base plus slugging against left handed pitching and it's not even close. Sox are walking away with that crown so far. Two and two all fastballs on four pitches to Mercedes. If there has been a kryptonite for your mean Mercedes it's been the breaking ball at points this season. Aiken just doesn't throw very many of. Them. No and usually for your mean it's not the breaking ball in the strike zone. Mercedes a golf shot to right field Santander parks to make the catch to retire the side but contrary to popular belief it's actually not quiet uptown Billy Hamilton we didn't know yesterday tomorrow there'd be more of them there was one one and a three it is a wire themed Sox math question number of letters the last name of the Sox batter who appears at the plate in the season three premiere of the wire multiplied by his jersey number. We've done something similar before at Camden Yards last time but not exactly this question so if you're a wire fan which was said in Baltimore David Simon the show's creator a big Orioles fan Bunk and McNulty were at the Orioles game and the White Sox were the team playing during the game. As it's one and one on Trey Mancini, and I was just talking to DJ about this. That year, the Wire crew was actually there at the game filming. They didn't just take the footage of that game involving the White Sox and Orioles. They actually went and filmed at Camden Yards. Bunk and McNulty have their kids at the ballpark, and the White Sox were in that uh, critically acclaimed television program. All the pieces matter. That's great. A little pub now and then doesn't hurt anybody. Fourth inning brought to you by Elk Grove Village. Learn more about our beyond business friendly community at makerswanted.org. One two from Lucas and there's that slider. He's been getting more swing and miss on the slider the last couple of games. We haven't seen it as much with not as much slider in this game today. Well look he didn't hit with it but that doesn't diminish that that was a very good slider. Great late break. Two and two. Fastball. See you later. Six strikeouts for Lucas. A little more high heat for you. That was right on the inside corner. He threw it right by him. 
I think he also got a piece of Collins on the backswing. Nope, just missed it. But that happens enough that we just assume <laughs> it's going to happen to a Sox catcher. Somewhere along the line. He has got popped yesterday. Santander takes a strike. Santander has banked four hits in this series. Well, look, he is one of their premier hitters. And they believe that he's one of the guys they're going to use going forward in this rebuild. Since coming back off the IL, a nine game hitting streak. There's a good slider. You love to see hitters react to it. He just barely was able to get a piece and keep it alive. It's a great 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss, change up. And Lucas dispenses his seventh strikeout here in the fourth. And what a weapon this is. Especially if you haven't seen it very much, it's really hard to sit back and not think that's a fastball leaving his hand. That's why so many people swing out in front of it. What do you think hitters look for when they're going well against the changeup for Lucas? I. I think very rarely do they look for a changeup. I think they're always looking fastball. And then if they can just what they're looking for is picking up the spin because the spin is drastically different than on a fastball. Popped up right at the plate. Zach Collins makes the catch softly for round number three. So two strikeouts in every inning but the third Steve. In a remarkable run for Lucas and it's a tie game. At NBC Sports Chicago.com, presented by nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Get to know the Vuk as much as you do the jingle at jeffvuk.com because nationwide is on your side. I almost missed my cue. I know. I mean, you were mesmerized. <laughs> Line. It turned out okay, though. Yeah, wait for the second verse. <laughs> we should do it as a round next time. Like, row, row, row your boat. I think Yander is going to have a pretty good at bat because he worked him for a walk last time with two outs. He's seen all of his pitches now, and now he's very much in a hitter's count. It's in for a strike, two and one. You have a smile on your face, and I'm wondering why. No, I just uh, the first pitch he took. Yeah. Was a 2 0 fastballs right down the middle. And that's one thing I think as he moves along, he's not going to take too many of those. You're saying that's the type of pitch people won't ever intentionally throw him in year five or six. Well, as soon as he starts, I mean, he's doing a great job now. As soon as he really starts to figure it out, they're not going to go there too often with him. That's low three and two. Tried to slow the bat down with the change up and Andrew got a piece of it. It yeah, did a good job of staying alive because at three and two. You don't expect to see the first change in the at bat. Another foul. <laughs> Towering fly ball to right, Santander goes back, comes in, makes a catch. One gone. Here is your Sox math winner for today. And we'll get to do the video for game one tomorrow. Sox Mike 242. Number of letters in the last name of the player who's in the wire is 
three. It's Carlos Lee, jersey number 45. He was facing Sidney Ponson in a game in May of 2004, May 5th, 2004, with the White Sox and the Orioles at Camden Yards and that HBO program. Uh, we should we should try and have our Sox Twitter fans uh, get David Simon to turn on our telecast. He's a big Orioles fan. I'm sure he's watching somewhere, so maybe he could flip us on. So uh, tweet at David Simon, the wire creator, and let him know that he was part of the Sox match question. Thanks. By the way, I'm looking at the Orioles jerseys. They wore the orange yesterday. As Garcia goes to third and Franco, they're wearing the black today. And the good news is everybody wore the proper jersey. For the Astros today, Zach Granke was starting. He went out to the bullpen wearing the white jersey. Everybody else was wearing navy. Well, he wanted to stand out. <laughs> he, he, he's always been like that. Zach Granke's <laughs> always been an iconoclast, and now he's just being more obvious about it. Yeah, you ever do that? I'm sure I did. Wrong jersey? Well, usually you wear what's hung up for you in your locker. So you can always blame it on who hung it up. Sometimes you just make a mistake and wear the wrong jersey. What was your favorite jersey to wear? Well, because of some very good years there, I liked the orange Oriole jersey. Mm -hmm. I started my career in orange and black and ended it in orange and black. Started Giants it with, the, with, the, with the Giants and ended it with the Orioles. Is there any jersey you particularly did not like? No, but what I did like was 73, those blue road jerseys with the red lettering. They were terrific. Keegan Akins pitched very well. We're tied at one after four in the series finale. Solo home runs. This one from DJ Stewart, former first round pick, snuck it over the right field wall. And a 1 0 Orioles lead, but the Sox responded with Billy Hamilton of the power hitting Hamilton. Boom, boom, Billy. I think if he hits one more somewhere in the doubleheader tomorrow or today, we can officially call him Boom Boom Billy. Who would have thought with a Mancini in the lineup, the nickname would go elsewhere, but such is life on this May the 30th. Fifth inning brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. By the way, uh, did not mention the fourth place finisher for Sox Math today. Huge White Sox fan and score producer Chris Tannehill playing Sox Math and evidently a big wire fan. Tanny came in fourth today, so you'll get Sox Math the home game sent to you. I was going to say, do we have some prizes for that? We have prize for that. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Stevie Wilkerson. Man, that changeup just disappears sometimes. Well, it wouldn't be near as effective if a hitter could see it out of his hand, but he can't. And it has to do with changing of his delivery to that pretty much short arm delivery that happened a couple of years ago. Three and two and a number of pitchers have adopted that as well guys like Joe Musgrove of San Diego a lot of guys have seen what Lucas has done and gone to it. Well also it's simplicity in motion. you're not doing a lot of rocking back you're not doing much of anything you're just not exactly going into a stretch but pretty much it's Right there, one step back and go get him. Cold strike three into the attic. A changeup and a fierce punch out from Sherwater. Wilkerson up twice, strikes out twice. Thought this was a walk. It came down. Nice job by Collins. You take the high pitch like that and watch what you do with the glove. You're taking the glove down before you move your arm. And by taking it down, it doesn't show as much movement. That was well framed, and he bought the strike. Stu Sherwater might have my favorite strike three call in the league. 
That's an aggressive right cross. Well, he's using it frequently, which is nice. It's Tom Payne like. Hey, White Sox fans, Xfinity Mobile delivers fast nationwide 5G on the most reliable network. So break free from the big three and save with Xfinity Mobile. It's a catchy line. I like that line. Break free from the big three. Yep. Who is your favorite uh, umpire to call your strike threes? Do you have one? I didn't get too many called strike threes. Oh. Yeah. I, I got, buddy. I got a few swinging strike threes. Not that many called. They'd see this stuff and they said, well, I can't take that. So you're the only pitcher I've ever met who the announcer could create a sore spot by asking, who did you like calling your strike threes? <laughs> I don't have many. Uh, I'm getting not, around to it. Not, not, not called. <laughs> you know, I had a few that were not called. Pleasure to be here with Eeyore <laughs> for today's telecast. Three and two, Lucas was hoping for strike three there to Nevin, who's in his second major league game. Payoff coming. Struck him out again. Lucas with a leg kick flourish. Ends Nevin, strikeout number nine. He gets a lot of mileage out of that high fastball. This is up and out of the zone. And he throws it by Phil's kid. I want to know where Lucas is looking after a strikeout like that. Like he's got the he's got the aggressive focused hyper locked in stare but it's kind of just it's very Lucas because his stare sometimes gets distant when he's focused on something else. Well, I'm wondering if he's taking a look at the man in the on deck circle and thinking you're next. Mm. That that look in his eye we just saw was very similar to what we saw. Collins got hurt. Yeah, Zach that got foul ball. Yep. Looks like he's going to be OK. So a, catch, a catcher is measuring where he wants to catch it. And then when there is a tip, obviously the glove wasn't there. It got, looks like a little part of the wrist. And that's what catchers have to put up with day after day after day. Almost ended up with a bad finger there. Swing and a miss, strike three. Lucas strikes out the side. He's just walking off. He was ready to go when he threw the pitch. That is a laser coming out of his eyes right there. Ten strikeouts for Lucas Giolito. And a TKO from Midwest Bank. Who else but Billy Hamilton? That's the sum total of the momentum today. It's a 1-1 game, and Billy tied it up. And how often do you see momentum changer, and then the guy becomes the leadoff hitter? 100% of the time today. Hey, exactly right. Don't think for a minute that I let you slide with the bad finger reference. Mm. There's a group from <laughs> before my time, but I got it. You remember finding out about them? Yep, they told me. One ball, one strike to Billy Hamilton. Well, I would think that Aiken's not going to go down and in again. Oh. That was the change, though, not the fastball, and Billy took it. He got the strike. Again, I don't think that's by design. I think he tries to throw that low and away to right hand hitters. He charged another one up, but this one's going to stay in the ballpark to center. And one gone. And we go into the studio to see what's coming up on Subaru White Sox post game live. Scott Pitsednik and Mark Carmen. Go ahead, Carm.
Carm, Scotty Potts, thank you very much. We look forward to Subaru White Sox post game live. Yeah, Keegan Aiken, 83 pitches. And now T8, a short pass, Freddy Galvis. It's a base hit for Anderson to start the third time through for the Sox. I would think the third time through would be a problem. As Tim takes it through the left side. Even if Freddie comes up with that, I'm not going to throw Tim out at first base. You applaud the effort. And the fans applaud the base hit. They do that. Nick Madrigal in the first inning had the first barrel of his career, that sweet spot combination of exit velocity and launch angle, and he nearly ran it out of the ballpark. A different part of the park, and that one's gone. Also, perhaps challenging a different defender than Cedric Mullins, who went a long way and pulled that one in. Yeah, if that ends up landing, that's probably a triple for Nick. And this game looks a little bit different. Tim at first. Sox are facing the rare pitcher whose last name is also an adjective. Keegan Aiken, but say it another way, it's akin. As in, it's my kin. Your name is akin, akin to, to a large pebble. Ah, excellent. It's fouled away. Head down to Guaranteed Rate Field. Your first bite is on us with a special ticket offer. Purchase Thank goodness this for this promo. Twenty-five-dollar <laughs> ticket to select <laughs> games and get ten dollars in food and beverage credit. To use at the ballpark for tickets, go to whitesocks.com slash first bite. Boy, did that come at the right time. So our director, Andrew <laughs> Blaustein, just got booked for aiding and abetting, I think, is what happened there. As Madrigal pumps it to right field. That is down. Tim beats feet for third, and he's going to get there. Runners at the corners. Sox are cooking this third time through, Stoney. Yeah, third time through figures to be difficult for a two-pitch pitcher. Unless those two pitches are both overwhelming. And Aiken's done a nice job today, but the third time through, the guys get used to seeing a certain velocity in a certain spot. And Nick, well, he just likes to hit with two strikes. He also likes to hit when he has less than that, but he's particularly dangerous. Turns out to be a nice play by Santander as he gets it in, but not before. Runners at the corners and only one out. So Nick Madrigal again. His two strike batting average is better than his non two strike batting average, which is just insane. As that ball's whacked to left field by Moncada, down the line it goes, and this ball ends up foul, and the net collects Stewart. The lead is available here. Cleveland has lost game one of its doubleheader, four to one to Toronto. Right now, the Sox then are up three and a half in the Central. Ball and a strike on Moncada. Severino telling Aiken he's starting to get under the ball. This is Major League average on base and slugging, third time through, larger than first and second time through. And we'll see how the third verse is for Aiken today. It's not started grandly. Severino faked to throw to third. One and two. Well, Tim came all the way down the line. It looked like he was trying to steal home. And Aiken didn't pay attention to him. But fortunately, Franco was not near the bag. Watch Tim. I mean, it looks like he's going and then trying to force a buck doesn't force him to move. Yohan's done a nice job this homestand of spoiling that high fastball that teams are trying to get him out on. Sox are aiming for a four game sweep against Baltimore. Mokata right now is second in the American League in on base percentage, including his base hit. 
to first in the third inning this afternoon. Way outside, and Severino throws a life raft to this tie game. Well, he does a nice job. It looked like he just exploded to his right. Made sure this one doesn't get by. That one just slipped out of Aiken's hands. And a good effort by Severino. Two on, one out. Two and two. Strikes him out on a fastball and two gone. This one catches the outside part of the plate. It's a strike, and Yuan just swings through it. And it looks like that's going to be it. 94 pitches for a guy that's making his first start today. He'll exit. We'll be back. on White Sox baseball. Take a listen to this. It's about time for him to start hitting the ball out of the ballpark, which I think he's going to start to do. Oh, boy. Yohan sends it way out of here. You may want to go replay the first inning because my partner <laughs> may have said that's going to happen. It's about time for him to start hitting the ball out of the ballpark, which I think he's going to start to do. Jose, if he's looking for a pitch, and like most great power hitters and run producers, they will guess on occasion. That's a changeup. We figured it would be forthcoming. Let's see if he can wait back. Yes, he did wait back and bring him home. So you called two of them yesterday. Yeah. What's Jose going to do here? Well, I don't think he's disappointed to see Plutko. The reason is he's three for ten lifetime with a couple of home runs. So. He comes into the game. You might remember him with Cleveland. He's on for the 20th time. ERA of four and a half. Jose looking to put the Sox on top any way he can. First pitch was up and middle away, and that's where Pletko has pitched to Brayu. It is amazing when you look at where the three hits have come. They've all been on fastballs just above the belt to the outside corner. Those three for ten have all been in just about the same spot. So if Jose remembers that and can zone up on that location, we may see the lead turn over to the White Sox here. Like right there, and he swung yep. through it. One and two. He didn't cut that. That was a regular fastball. Throws it by him. So he still has one strike left, however. Two on, two out. Adam Pletko, Jose Abreu. Two and two. Here's where they are. Pletko against Abreu. Those are the three hits. They're all in one specific location. And we've seen him pitch him there already. Yeah. Three of the four pitches this at bat. Severino looking at the feet of Abreu to see if he's getting closer to the plate, anticipating the ball away. Down and out. Three balls, two strikes. Jermaine Mercedes next, but Jose would like to take care of this on his own. Thank you. A wall of sound. Outside ball four, bases loaded. One of the things you're going to see going forward is Teams are going to consistently pitch around Jose. They'll give him pitches to hit maybe early in the game, second time up with one man on, but this time there's no doubt that Pletko 
he knew his history with Abreu and he wasn't going to give him anything too good to hit. Now you mean can spoil all of that strategy by an early in account fastball that he hits on the button. Cut it away one ball no strikes. Mercedes powered a 3 0 pitch out of here earlier in the homestand. In the running for AL Rookie of the Year, Mercedes takes a strike. Lucas pacing as he does. Ten strikeouts to his name so far. Mercedes rips it to short. Galvis, a spectacular play. Saves the day for Baltimore. Freddie Galvis whirling on the ground to put away out number three. Hits it hard, unfortunately. Come up empty. What a series for Freddie Galvis. He's made a couple of spectacular defensive plays in this one already. This one saved two runs. From his knees, getting the force out at second. The game stays tied at one. Lucas 10 strikeouts 20 swings and misses his career high in swings and misses is 30 68 pitches only so a bunch more in the tank for Giolito in the neighborhood 2 and 0. Oh. What's surprising is 10 strikeouts and this just the 70th pitch. Treat yourself to the best the White Sox have to offer with premium seating. Learn more about our exclusive spaces and world class amenities. We got the perfect package for you, your family, or your business. For more information, call or text 312 674 1000 or visit whitesocks.com. Severino's bat went flying, went right at the bat boy, right by the dugout. It's not how you're supposed to deposit the bat with the bat boy. Nope. Two and two. I don't think either of the last two pitches were strikes, but Severino is. Not known for a great many walks during the course of his career. Uh, the sixth inning is brought to you by Mike's Hard Lemonade Seltzer. Two two on the way. Severino went around. That's strike three. Eleven strikeouts. Six of the last seven batters have been strikeouts. Getting pretty amazing. This changeup just dives at the end. Severino cannot check it up. There you see the grip. There you see the sink. There you see the departing batter. Thank you for that wonderful bye safari. Bye. Thanks. On your left, we'll see another strikeout. And there's a bunt third base side. That's a really good one. Let's see if it gets foul. Will it ever? Will no it chance. Turn? It'll never go foul. It can literally roll to Gary, Indiana from here, and it's not going foul on that line. Thank you for having an answer to my question. Yeah. And this shows, even though Moncada was in at third, if you lay down a good bunt, they can't get you at first. And now you got to figure that he's going to steal second base. It's just a question of when. Freddie Galvis takes ball one. Crowd rides Surewater, the plate umpire, on that call.
one and one. Do you think at any time in the long illustrious career of Freddie Galvis he ever grounded into a double play. I do believe so. At some point be nice if he remembered that. Well, the first the only thing is. I don't think. Mullins is going to stay around long enough to see it but. We'll see what happens on this pitch. He actually grounded into 16 of them in 2016 and four this year. Six stolen bases for Mullins. There he goes. Pitch was high. Throw to second is wide and a stolen base, as prophesied. Yeah, I mean, it's a tie game, and you got your premier base stealer on. Even though Lucas uses a modified slide step, it's not a good throw, but he got a very good jump. So two and one for Galvis. He takes inside. It's three balls and a strike. Galvis goes after a high pitch and rips it to right field. Garcia is back at the wall, and this ball is up and foul and just foul to make it three and two. Well, that one stayed up on the line for a long time. Fortunately, what wind there is is blowing toward that right field corner. Push that ball foul at the last instant. I mean, it's really close. That is a high change, and even though it's off the end of the bat, it's only 335 down the line. Galvis knows he. Got enough of it. But it's on the right side of the pole, both figuratively, figuratively and literally. Strikeout would be nice here. Three and two for Galvis, and he bloops it foul. One out bunt single for Mullins. Three and two to Galvis. That's the third three ball count today for Giolito. First two were outs. This one's a walk. First walk for Baltimore. Are you dealing with a consumer problem? No. Well, it's too bad. Because if you were, <laughs> NBC5 responds and can help. Well, responds can help. They can help with everything. They answer every single customer complaint. Just call one. 844 NBC dash RSP or go to NBCChicago.com. Thought you were Aretha for a moment. <laughs> Forgot the back end of it. Ethan Katz out to talk to his protege, Lucas Giolito. Two on, one out for Mancini. Trey Mancini against Giolito. Almost hit him. Way high off the backstop and bouncing toward first base. So now second and third with one out here in the sixth. This one just sails over Zach's head. You would think it'd be a wild pitch. We'll have to wait and see, however. Is a wild pitch. 
Well, now you're behind 2 0 in the count. You got first base open, but you have a really good hitter up next. Three balls, no strikes. All right, so if you're Mancini, what are you doing here? He probably wants to swing at it. I would think his manager would allow him to do that, even with Santander in the on deck circle. That's in ball four, bases loaded. Well, it's been a steady diet of change ups to Santander. He fanned him twice. Eighty four pitches, nobody up in the Sox bullpen. They didn't expect they would need it. Santander takes a strike on a change. To the comfort of the changeup against Santander. Well, so far he's been out ahead of every changeup thrown today. Oh, two. Struck him out. Three straight changeups. Lucas conquers Santander. But he saves the best for last because this one just dove out of the zone. He's ahead. He knows he can toy with the strike zone, but throws it in literally the perfect spot. And so now Franco, who's popped out twice on the first pitch of the at bat. It's a slider to start in ball one. Not having a particularly good year. However, he does hit the ball very hard, generally when he makes contact. Bases loaded, two down, and Franco calls time. Franco went after a high change for strike one. <laughs> Orioles left the bases loaded in the sixth in game two yesterday. Strike away. A big wow from Franco. High change and then low change. All you can do is pout. Give him the Joe Kelly lift. Nice. Ball and two strikes. Lucas Giolito owns 12 strikeouts today. Popped up. Back of home. Zach Collins. Out number three. Hey now, Lucas Giolito. That is a great job of getting out of this inning by Lucas. Okay to go. It's Harvard Westlake High School. Lucas Giolito and Ethan Katz now from California to Chicago talking it over in the dugout and Lucas just did a marvelous job to get out of bases loaded one out Steve. Well I think he was pitching as, as much with his head as he was with his arm. 
because he pitched around Mancini. Really didn't give him anything too good to hit. He is the premier run producer on this Oriole team. So pitching around him to load him up now, you still have bases loaded with only one out. But he figured he could get Santander in the changeup. He did that. And then Franco, who usually hits the ball hard, pops up for the third time. And he wiggled out of a tough jam. Think about 2018, last time Lucas saw the Orioles, having the poise to decide to do that and then execute on all of the pitches he needed to execute on. I don't think it would have happened. I mean, right now he's at the top of his game in every aspect of it. He's thinking a very good game. Physically, he's got everything you need to be successful, and he's got some pitches that nobody else really has. Very few people have a high and a low change. And plus, with that delivery, it's very deceptive. Three and two to Andrew Vaughn. I think most of the time, although you can't really look in one spot, but I think as the Sox hitters go up against Plutko, they'll realize that you can look middle out if you're a right hand hitter and you're going to get the ball there a lot. But he's going in, it looks like, this time. Ooh, struck him out on what would have been ball four. The MLB ballpark app gives you the best experience at guaranteed rate field. Buy and manage game tickets, order your favorite food and beverages, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB ballpark app today. That's going to be it for Pletko, who did his job. And he's going to walk out. We'll step out. We will be back. And it's Cole Solzer. We've seen him a couple times in this series. He's been pretty good. On for the 17th time, his ERA of 189. Is he 29 strikeouts, six walks? That's real good. And he gets the left handers out. Better than he gets the right handers out. You know how he does that is with that changeup that opponents are 1 for 26 against this year. That's an 038 average with 16 strikeouts from that changeup. And so you would imagine Garcia would see one of those puppies, but at a later time. <laughs> well, I didn't. Uh, no, I know you. I mean, I was that, leaving it for dramatic effect, but it didn't have to well, come no, there. That's how he pitches, though. I mean, yeah. he's going to lean on that change. Maybe here. Hey, there you go. There it the is. Plot thickens. Plot armor. What are you looking at, Blue? <laughs> Fan just said, "What are you looking at, Blue?" Yeah, the answer is yeah. the strike zone. Yeah, that was the zone. Strike three. Our weather changes so fast, you have to be prepared. Ditch that generic weather app and download the NBC Chicago app. Plan your day with Chicago's most accurate weather team and the only live radar right at your fingertips. When you're at NBC Tower, you never know when you're going to run into Brant Miller. Is that a weather vane? Shows you the direction that it's going. Is that an ananometer? Is that what that's called? What's what's the wind uh, speed thing? Really? What is it? I don't know. That's the one course I skipped in college. And it comes out today. Weather nomenclature. I don't have anything for you. Go away. You done yet? <laughs> Just going to see how far that ball of yarn was going to unravel. <laughs> Watch it fall down the stairs. One and one up and out to Zach Collins. Two and one. It's up high as well. It's three balls and a strike from Solzer. Ball four, Zach takes a walk. Here comes Billy. Well, the first thing that Billy's going to do is check out where Franco is set up. Because if he doesn't come in far enough, 
a bunt is a nice idea but right now he has drifted from way back at third to in on the grass at third. There's a bunt shown and a strike taken. They are pretty well straight up in the outfield for Billy Hamilton. He swings through strike two. Another change up from Solcer. Oh two. Just got a piece foul. Collins at first two strikes struck him out we'll go to the seventh still tied in the series finale I'm now for the Xfinity mobile high speed action and it's the day so far of Lucas Giolito and it's been pretty good he's got some spin rate for you mm. doesn't matter what pitch he throws spin rate is usually pretty good. And all in all, a wonderful performance so far. But he's still out there. Now he's got to get the bottom part of the order and turn it over to his offense. Stevie Wilkerson first, then Nevin and Stewart. Stewart's the guy who got him for the home run back in the third inning on a two strike fastball. Wilkerson fouls it off, ball and a strike. See, you have Mr. Uh -oh. Google. I, on the other hand, have Ernie the Engineer. And Ernie the Engineer sent me anemometer is correct for both speed and direction, or both. How about that? Yeah. Thanks, Ernie. Ernie is watching in Scottsdale. It was a very uh, early in its career, anemometer. <laughs> Yes, he did. Sharp slider. Whoa, that, that almost looked like a curveball. Well, Lucas is getting not only a lot of movement, he's getting a lot of depth. And if that's not his curveball, that slider acted exactly like a curveball does. One, two on the ground to Madrigal to the backhand side. Nick's got it there for round number one. Almost forgot what a ball in play looked like. I mean, Lucas has not given up too many of them, and the outfield has actually only caught one ball in the game for the Sox. Well, look, heading into the fourth inning, it's been a couple of pop ups to Collins and then strikeouts and walks until that ground ball. Tyler Nevin who's 0 for 2 with a fly out to Garcia and a strikeout. I mean poor Andrew Vaughn has just stood out there all day long. But it's a beautiful day. Yeah, wonderful day. Just enjoy the sunlight. <laughs> Do you hear what I heard? Yeah we got some <laughs> some fans behind home plate. Airing out the opposition. And still they go to town. Last time they said, why do you do this sport? <laughs> Catch the action from a private diamond suite for as low as one hundred dollars per person for you and your group. This includes parking, exclusive entrance and more. Visit whitesocks.com slash group for more information. I missed hecklers. Occasionally they can be really fun. Yes. Especially if it's at your home park. <laughs> On the road, sometimes not so fun. 
Do you have any recollection of your favorite hecklers from when you were playing? Oh yeah, I mean I got to Baltimore. That was their first free agent acquisition ever. And I was terrible <laughs> for two and a half months. It was awful. And they used to yell at me, go back to Chicago. I mean, every day. It was just kind of you get used to it because I knew I was terrible. They knew I was terrible, so it was no secret. They kept on showing up at the park. That was a good thing. Do you ever respond to him? Just occasionally. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, what did you say to him? Well, I would usually follow up when they say you're terrible. I said, I know that, but you're paying my salary by coming here, so continue to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd have something clever instead of just, you know. No, I mean you can't. Angry. Not going to yell back at. No, not going to be angry at all. Oh, change up again. Gravity took hold. Two and two. And this is where Lucas, he's got to be careful. You have a guy with some big power, former number one draft pick. But he has been susceptible to the straight change, as has so many of the Orioles. Plus, you got a good feeling for Severino coming up next. 2-2 Two -two change. I mean, he turned him into a turnstile there. And he got a piece. Was able at the very last instant to foul it off. Then he inquired back to Stu Sherwater if, in fact, it was a strike, and I believe it was. Two and two. Here we go. Giolito for Stewart. Upstairs, the slider. Three and two. Lucas's career high in strikeouts is 13. He's done it three times, including in the no hitter against the Pirates last year. How about one more straight change in a perfect spot outside? It was a change, wasn't in a perfect spot, and Stewart was able to follow it off. One hundred five pitches. Lucas knows that this is going to be his last inning. Three and two again. Ooh. Well, he emptied the tank on that one because that was 97. He figured I'm going to throw the fastball as hard as I can and try to get him looking at it. So he surprised him with the fastball, but it was off the plate. I mean, that's a, a good call. There's no doubt about that. I think if it is a strike, he probably gets him because it's two or three miles an hour harder than anything he's thrown. But he also knew that Severino was coming up and he struck him out twice. Ball one to Severino. Sox in the bottom of the seventh. We'll have Anderson, Madrigal, and Moncada. Ethan Katz watching Tony La Russa next to him. Watching as well. Popped up Abreu. Into foul ground for round number three, and Giolito is through seven innings, and the Sox will try to get him the lead. Can sail fun at home. And welcomes Dylan Tate and pops a single at second base. Tim is on. It's a tie ball game. See if the Sox can get him around and grab the lead. Tim with his second hit of the ball game, and this one, well, exit velocity of 12. Gets it off the end of the bat, but hits it in a perfect spot. Okay, so maybe 13. But Wilkerson can't get to it. That's the big thing. And Tim is aboard representing the go ahead run. 
See how the Sox handle it with Nick Madrigal, who's one for three. Tim at first. Could be a hit and run at play if you decide to do that if you're Tony La Russa, as there's ball one. It's Dylan Tate on for the 13th time. We've seen him in this series. Right handers have hit him pretty well. Sinker slider, really, and mostly sinker from Dylan Tate. Tim was leaning a little bit. He really doesn't strike out a whole lot of people. So that bodes well for the entire lineup making contact against him. Outside, 2 0. Oh. I mean, in the major leagues these days, when you have a strikeout rate of just 11%, it means a few guys are seeing it pretty well. see how well in this seventh inning 2-0 to Madrigal Tim at first there he goes Madrigal that's strike one I don't believe he made contact with the ball so Tim's got second base that's probably going to go as a stolen base you would assume yeah oh wow See that that's a foul ball. Yes, we'll keep him at second though and throw the next pitch by all means. Didn't he get a piece of that? Nah. Two and two. So two and two. Yeah. I think a fan may have just had an opinion on that. Well, Nick is in. He's in pretty good shape to accomplish what Tony Lusa wanting to accomplish is moving Tim along to third. Because he's got to make some contact, and all you got to do is hit it to the right side. Eventually, the goal is to get him home. Yes. Past third. <laughs> get him 90 feet farther. Now, Tim starts to take off, throw back to second, ends up in center field. Tim's going for third. Mullins has no play. Tim Anderson made that happen. He alarmed the pitcher, Tate, and there he goes to third with nobody out. I was kind of interested in the reaction by Freddie Galvis because it looked like Freddie was trying to do everything he could to anchor Tim to the bag. So he missed it here. Not only does he tag him without the baseball, but then he gets in his way on his way to third base. So now it moves everybody in in the infield. Tim's going to steal second. Then he's likely going to get picked off, but he pushes Galvis out of the way and takes off. And now Madrigal, one of the best two strike hitters in Major League Baseball, has the lead run 90 feet away. And there is a lot of room to hit it through and bloop it over the head of the pulled in infield. field Santander doesn't get there Nicky two strikes gives the Sox the lead that's off the net so it's still in play it's a triple three bases for Nicky two strikes and a 2-1 lead he has hit a couple of missiles this afternoon I got to believe when you're looking at the guy who profiles as a two hitter in today's game. You're looking at the guy that just tripled down the line. Nick is going to make some contact. It's his second hit. He drives in a run. He puts his socks on top and this one slicing away from Santander who had very little chance to get it. And then he's off to the races. Now. Brandon Hyde is coming out of the dugout to ask what that hit. Well, it hit the fence first. It looked like it might have hit over the fence. Secondly, if, if that's the case, 
Tim is going to score anyway, but Madrigal is going to be at second and not third. Now again, the net is in play. If, if it, it climbs over the wall to the net. Right, I mean, if it hit the net, then it's fine. But it looked like it hit the net and then hit something else there before it came back to the field of play. Let's watch it again. Let's just see where this climbs to. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that bounced out of the park. I, I, but see, in that, that area, that railing is still behind the net, Steve. So it hit that, it hit that railing that's also part of the netted area. So I do believe because it's covered by the net, that railing is covered by the net, that ends up being a live ball. That's what happened. Based on my understanding, yeah. because there's no yellow line involved there, and now the infield's going to come in and absolutely pay for it. Moncada sears one to center, and it's 3-1. to one. That's Yohan's second hit of the day. And the top of the lineup is getting it done. Yohan drives in run number 29 after Nikki drives in run number 16. And a first ball fastball goes right back where it came from. Steve, you, you can't miss down to Moncada if you're going to throw up a fastball. Not these days. No. But Lucas Giolito made the huge pitch when he had to because Garrett Crochet was warming up in the bullpen. And Garrett was warming up for Mullins, who was coming up next. So the big pitch of the ball game was the pop-up by Severino. Lucas then goes a full seven, and he becomes a pitcher of record. But he really worked hard and pitched his butt off today. Oh, Jose wanted to put a hole in a window on a sedan on the Dan Ryan. Two strikes. Severino. Yeah, that got his hand, it looked like. And Stu Sherwater's going to give him a chance to regroup. This one got him flush. No, oh, got him right off, right off that knee guard. We saw that happen to Garver of the Twins, and he missed a couple of days after that. There's a lot of echo to yep. those hits off that leg cover. I think he'd have rather had it in that shin guard than the unprotected hand. Yeah. Time called. I was just thinking about Madrigal's hit and what Billy Hamilton said to us post game yesterday about his dream always being an inside the park home run. That is the best hope for Billy Hamilton's inside the park home run is to climb that net in the right field corner and streak around the bases like he did on the home run yesterday. Yeah, right now he's just happy hitting it out of the park. <laughs> That's right. He'll deal with the rest later. Not a foul ball. Dylan Tate is not fooling a lot of people right now. No, he is not. It's like when they take a house of pancakes. It's a big A-frame <laughs> house, and they turn it into a car rental place. You drive by, and you say, that used to be a house of pancakes. Well, we saw him for two-thirds in the opener of this series. He gave up a run and a hit and a walk. And <laughs> Jose is wearing out Severino. 
<laughs> he wants anybody to hit but Jose because he's fouled two off him already. One was off the shin guard. This is off the bottom of the chest protector and the thigh just for <laughs> just for an added benefit. Severino's going, give me the ball. Yeah, maybe this at bat will end here soon. Man. As bad at bats go for a catcher, this is pretty high on the list. Say is a really tough out right now. Just a really tough out. Well, he's able to see the ball for a long time. And obviously, he sees it well enough to lead the major leagues in run production. 45 runs batted in. Devers is right there. Mancini, you see, had a couple of days off. He was leading when he came in. But Jose is able to foul off pitches if they're even close to the strike zone and keep it alive for something he wants. To second base. Nice play by Wilkerson to start that. They'll get one out and nothing more. Angel Hernandez had to dart out of the way on that ground ball. Well, Jose hit this one awfully hard. Good play by Wilkerson. He's had a good defensive series. And Jose then hustling down the line, realizing that it's got a good chance to be two because he hit it that hard. Off balance throw is right there. I think if Galvis had taken it maybe a step in back to the bag so he had some momentum going he might have gotten him but he's throwing flat footed at second. And I think Jose beats the play. And hopefully he's okay. Yeah it's he's safe. Tie goes to the runner. And I think landing hard on his ankle. I think he'll feel that for a bit. Sox with a win would guarantee at least a half game added in the standings against Cleveland. They lost their first game of the doubleheader against Toronto. It's tied at nothing in the third in game two Minnesota's trailing Kansas City five to three bottom seven as Mercedes looks at ball one. Tigers won again six to two Yankees uh, Glaber Torres had a really rough day in the field. How about sweeping the Yankees. Didn't see that one coming. Not many folks did. Was Tarek Skubal for the Tigers going six innings, a scoreless ball. Derek Holland threw a scoreless seventh. Tigers believe Skubal is going to be a pretty good one, and they, the Tigers are being built around young pitching, and they got a, a couple more coming. Two one. Tap back to Tate. Throw to second and the long stretch. I mean, a really long stretch, like a Simone Biles stretch <laughs> for out number two. Pitchers do have a hard time throwing the bases. This one almost in the outfield. But Wilkerson keeping his foot on the bag. Orioles <laughs> got lucky. I mean, Valdez is the guy that throws all the changeups. That's supposed to be Dylan Tate. That is what Stevie Wilkerson did there. That looked like Tatis Jr. getting out of the way of that pitch the other night. 
Andrew Vaughn got to Tate for a base hit in game one of this series. Two. Three straight hits to open this inning. Anderson, Madrigal, Moncada. And the Sox have taken their first lead of this ball game. Each team hit a home run in the third. And now six outs to get for the Sox bullpen. Galvis at shortstop to Wilkerson, who's been involved on all the outs in the seventh inning. Sox do some damage though. Three to one. Madrigal and Moncada drive them in to the eighth. We go with a sweep on the line. Dean family. Dan yeah, and son Jason. One of them can pitch. It's true. That's Dan's actual 1983 starter jacket. <laughs> like his actual 83 starter jacket on his son. So hi Dan. Eighth inning brought to you by the Illinois Lottery. And let's take a look at the upcoming schedule presented by Volkswagen. After the Orioles leave, it's on to Cleveland for four. Doubleheader tomorrow. And then home for four against Detroit. Then the off day, and Toronto provides the opposition. So things moving right along. And the new pitcher in the game is Garrett Crochet on for the 14th time. He's on to neutralize the top of this order. Strike one. Dan's son Jason plays hockey too. He's a he's a very good athlete. He is. Yeah. Just like dad. Well, his son's a good athlete. Oh one. <laughs> Ball and a strike on Cedric Mullins. How about Geo today? Seven innings, 12 strikeouts. No, just a a remarkable job. Gave up the one run. But he was in a couple of jams late. Couple of jams late and got out of it with the bases loaded in the sixth. And down to his last hitter. Severino was going to be the last hitter he faced last inning. And he was equal to the task. Third base side, Moncada thinks he has a play. Yohan is right. Sox fans, single game tickets are on sale now for games through June 16th. Plus, promos are back. Secure your spot and catch all the action at home. For tickets, scan the QR code. Or go to whitesocks.com today. 21,000 here today. Great to hear the park getting closer and closer to fill for what we expect to be a great chase for the AL Central through the summer. A lot of people, they were very loud in a couple of different instances where the game was on the line, and certainly we could hear them a lot last inning with the single, the triple, and the single scoring the two. Lead runs for the Sox. Garrett's pumping in strikes so far. Yeah, this is the way he is eventually going to pitch. I mean, I think the times we've seen the bad control, I think it's been more of an aberration, but you can't lose sight of the fact that he's still a really young pitcher. I mean, normally, were it not for COVID or any other circumstances, maybe he's still in the minor leagues waiting to come up here. Another pop up. Out number two to Jose. Today's game is brought to you by Marquette Bank. Since 1945, Marquette Bank has worked to improve the lives of neighbors, families, and business owners. They're a modern neighborhood bank with online banking, mobile banking, and digital home financing. Better than that, they're a bank that cares about your success and our community. So discover neighborhood banking that feels good at eMarquetteBank.com. Two down. And this line to right field. Garcia's back on it to make the play. And Garrett Crochet has a 1 2 3 8 inning. Three outs to get for a four game sweep. Sox will hit again after this. Pride with White Sox checking and an official White Sox debit card. Only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash White Sox to learn more. Beautiful day at the ballpark. Bottom eight. Sox are in the lead. 
And a new pitcher, it's Paul Fry on for the 20th time. He's been asked to save a couple of games. He was one out of three. ERA is good, however, at 250. So you want the good news or the good news? Well, I have a feeling that Cleveland is experiencing the wrath of that Toronto offense. That's correct. The good news is it's 4 0 Toronto. The good news also is the Blue Jays are already in that bullpen after two and a third in game two of this doubleheader. That's, yeah, that is a very good thing. Winning the first game 4 to 1. Chris Kampka has asked whether or not Paul Fry throws a crinkle cutter. Figured we'd share that with our viewing audience. You can use that at work on Tuesday. The ground ball to short and Freddie Galvis in one motion to first. And one down as we go to the studio, see what's coming up on White Sox post game live presented by Subaru. Mark Carmen and Scotty Pods. Take it away. We look forward to it. Carm, Scotty, thank you. Zach Collins walked last time. Three outs to get in the ninth inning for the Sox as Zach takes a wraparound slider 0 and 2. Punched him out. Fastball right at the borderline. Zach didn't like it. Time for a message for Powering Chicago. Do you have electrical work you need done at your home or business? Visit PoweringChicago.com and click the Find a Contractor button. On time, on budget, done the right way every time. Powering Chicago, IBEW Local 134, Nika, Chicago. He's Steve Stone. I'm Jason Benetti. We thank you for joining us for today's ball game as the Sox are up and going for a four game sweep against the O's and a first pitch strike to Billy Hamilton. And one fan is chanting MVP like they do for Abreu. Well, he was one of the most valuable guys in this series. So maybe MVS. Because. He's hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's made some great catches in center field. He can play all three positions. I mean, what a handyman to have around as it's as it's played out with all of the injuries Sox have had to their outfield. Time now for the T-Mobile coverage cam, and we'll go back to this grand moment. For the second time in as many days, Billy Hamilton. And the ballpark will never hold him. At least twice. Wow, Severino somehow got to that ball to finish the deal. That's a wild play. Hamilton could have peeled off if he didn't. Instead, three outs to get. Love the woo from Lucas coming off the diamond. Get caught up. Brought to you by Bob Curcio Auto Group. And it was Billy Hamilton to tie the game in the third. A solo shot, a laser over the left field wall. Back to back days with a home run for Billy. And then Nick Madrigal again with two strikes and RBI triple. It goes the opposite way, and the ball rattles around for a while. So Sox are on top, but looking for a little more as Yuan Moncada goes right back up the middle. 
And that's the difference in this game. It's three to one behind an outstanding performance by Lucas Giolito. 12 strikeouts in seven innings, gave up only three hits and a one home run. Made some big pitches when he had to, pitched around some guys that it was wise to and turns it over to Liam Hendricks. First pitch, strike one to Santander as the ninth innings brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. Looking for save number 13, and this is 15th opportunity on for the 23rd time. ERA keeps going down. Strikeouts keep going up. Santander has seen 13 pitches today. 12 have been strikes. And he saw a boatload of straight changes. Probably not going to see one from Liam. Because that would be a first if he threw one. What a fastball right down the gut. 98. So he's throwing every bit as hard. This is his third appearance in a row. You know, it can't be easy getting surfed on with changeups the first three at bats, and then you come in and somebody's pushing it toward 100. No, I think whether he gets him or not, he probably figures he's got a better shot at Hendricks than Giolito. Slider for him, shot to right. Garcia's there. Out number one. That ball hit awfully hard. He took it right off the ground and lined it out. And William is wondering how he made any contact on that. That's his wipeout slider. We told you Santander is a very good hitter. Lucas made him look bad today, but Lucas had an extraordinary straight change. Pitch here, soft catch by Zach Collins on a slider to Franco. Tell you what, Zach's framing has improved certainly. Well, I think he's worked very hard on it, and he knows what he has to do to get some playing time. Strike two. <laughs> Orioles only have three hits in this game. Mullins has two of them. Stewart has a home run. One, two on the way. Tim juggles and then has out number two. One more to get. Well, you can juggle the ball, but Tim has the experience now to realize you don't have to panic. You've got some time. Franco's not the fastest man in the world, so after the juggle, just keep it right there. Off his knee, he relaxes, he throws it across in plenty of time. The Orioles are one out away from going the entire series over with runners in scoring position. Credit Sox pitching. Giolito, Lynn, Keichel, and Cease. Keichel allowed four earned runs. The rest of the starters gave up two in their three starts. That's six earned runs in four games for the White Sox starting pitching. And the bullpen has gotten better. Bullpen's allowed one run yep. all series. And the key to the bullpen is letting the starters take you late, then you can mix and match with the guys you want in there in a winning effort. Question is, will Hendricks be available for tomorrow's doubleheader in Cleveland? Liam pitched both ends of the doubleheader yesterday. If you ask him, he'd probably say yes. Well, if you ask Liam Hendricks, are you available at 3.30 <laughs> in the morning on whatever the eighth day of the week is, he'd say yes. you got to respect a man who wants to be out there. Madrigal at second. Liam Hendricks saves another. He did quick work 
of the Baltimore Orioles. And there is the four-game sweep for the Sox. And now, with Cleveland's result pending, the Sox could be four and a half up as they go to Cleveland. And Bobby Thigpen was the last guy to do what Liam did the last 24 hours. Well, it really helps to have a man who wants the ball every opportunity to nail down a save. Liam Hendricks is that guy. The starting pitching has been unbelievable. It's the first time a four game sweep since 1956. So these don't come around too often. And when they are here, you really have to enjoy it. And this team is coming together as just that, a team. Whether it's Billy Hamilton or somebody else off the bench, Jose Abreu leading the way, but Moncada hitting it as well as he can hit it. Tim Anderson setting up just about everything from the one spot in the batting order. This team is in pretty good shape right now, despite the injuries. So, Sox will be in first place going to Cleveland for a doubleheader and a big one tomorrow at 210. Well, you have to get your rest. Oh, yeah, you do too. See you then. Okay. For our entire crew, our producer Chris Withers, our director Andrew Blaustein, our associate producer Chris Kamka, our stage manager Joe Groob, our wonderful whole group, he's Steve Stone, I'm Jason Benetti. Farewell into the studio, Subaru White Sox post game live. Mark Carmen, Scotty Pods, take it away, gentlemen.